this is how to get better at crease patterns and how to understand them to make things easier. So, as you know, crease patterns are just a bunch of lines and a bunch of shapes and a bunch of directions. But one example is that a lot of crease patterns use is these squares, exactly as you see them, exactly as how they're coloured. This is like probably the most um, obvious example that crease patterns use nowadays. All the designers have this in the crease patterns, so I thought this would be a good example to show how we collapse them and just how to actually go about doing it. So we've got three examples here. We have just the ordinary. I couldn't find a, a crease pattern that had just one simple one. So this is basically four simple ones but just together. So it's the exact same as if, as if it was just one. We also have this one which is, is the same principle. It's a tiny bit more complex because we've got again a few wee extra things to work on here. and. We also have a very, 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 very complex one. This is Kota's Insect, which I've got the model collapsed. I'll show you what it looks like at the end. So, we'll be focusing on this part. We'll be leaving the rest, but just this part. We'll come back to this. And this. So, first of all, we're going to look at this. So, if you want to take notes, um, please do it. It will help. I'll try to talk slow when I explain. I found that when I was editing my videos where I was talking, funnily enough, I couldn't understand myself on some parts. So I'm going to take my time and hopefully it's easier for you to understand. Right, so basically, with these creases, as in order to collapse them, we must have four creases in place first. We must have the mountain fold, mountain fold, we're just going to imagine this is a mountain fold and these don't exist. Or this one, so mountain fold and mountain fold. Now this is probably the most common example of how to collapse it. So the main thing is that when we collapse these parts, we first of all need to have the mountain fold. We'll just do these two sides first. So these first, so like we can't really collapse it if we just have two mountain folds like this. It's not going to work. So what we need to do is from this position we're going to make we're going to open up and then push in. So we have this. So we've just clicked this mountain fold and mountain fold in place. And then we're going to make this mountain fold and then this one here, like that. So that is basically how it gets collapsed, but we're just going to flip it around so it matches the crease pattern. So it's just like that. So if we unfold it slightly, we can see that we have the four mountain folds in place with the four diagonals as well. So the main thing is that when you collapse it, you have all those creases in place first, beforehand. And then, this is the most important part, you have that 90 degree angle. So we have, basically, we're bringing this edge right down to there, which is like 90 degrees. And we're bringing this edge as well, 90 degrees. So we have those two lots of 90 degree angles that we bring down. So again, and then when you have that in place it will basically snap together. You'll feel it work and if you've used all the creases correctly you'll know that you've done it right. Because you shouldn't need to make any extra creases, you, sh you shouldn't need to adjust them at different angles. It's always creases like this. Every time you see this pattern, you do the exact same method, you apply it the same way, you collapse the same way, you should get the same result. And then from there on, you do the things differently, like the shape of it, etc. 
Again, that applies to different crease patterns, but this is basically the standard out of the box edition. So we've collapsed this one, we're going to do the other three as well, and it's the exact same. We're going to open it up and then fold up. Again, we've got this mountain fold in place. If it was there, for example, then we've got this one and this one. So we just bring these edges up together. I don't know why it keeps going out of focus. I think I'm too close. But anyway, it's like that. And then the final two. I'll also include uh, pictures of these in the description. So if you want to download them, print them off or pre-crease them, and then practice, you can go ahead and do that if it helps. So like that, and then the final one, which is like that. So I'm not I'm not going to collapse these parts because that doesn't um, need to be involved in this video. It doesn't matter. But that's basically what it looks like. So when you have one collapsed or four collapsed, you have the basic 90 degree angle. So we started off flat and then we bring them together and collapse like that. So the main rule is, if you want to take notes, have the four major creases, or have the eight major creases in place so the four straight mountain folds coming from each corner of the square or the diamond and then having the four mountain folds on the diamond slash square in place and then you just perform the two 90 degree creases by bringing either edge, you can start off this way or you can start off this way but bringing two of the edges together at first so we've got two here, and then we're just going to swivel it around. And then as you do that, you put this mountain fold in place, and this mountain fold in place, like that. Then that is the collapsed version. Don't know, that is what it looks like when it's collapsed. So we're going to put this to the side, and come to the next one. We're going to apply the same method to this, even though it's slightly different. We don't have the actual diamond or square, but the same method applies because, let me see, what we have is this valley fold and mountain mountain, and we have this valley fold, mountain, mountain, and obviously here mountain, mountain, so we have to collapse it the same way. So first of all, um, we will make mountain folds like this. And then the thing is with this, we have a pleat here as well. So we'll, this part will get folded up over using this valley fold. So we can't, we can't just do that. I mean, that does work. We have used the valley fold like this, but that then makes this a valley fold which is supposed to be a mountain so that doesn't work I mean it works for the centre but not for here so what we have to do is we have to bring this point I'll, I'll use this edge for example we have to bring this edge to the 90 degree edge so like this so we have to bring it oops. we have to bring it down like that. So we have to get that 90 degree angle on the edge. So this one right here. So if we bring this 90 degrees, we can see that we have this. Obviously the 90 degrees, which is important, 
and we can collapse this part and then we can push this part in like that and right, that's getting pretty annoying why does it keep going out of focus there so we have this so if you look at it from what we've done the first time it uses this part correct but this part becomes a valley fold when it's supposed to be a mountain fold so it's wrong so once we added that 90 degree angle into the paper we then turned this into a mountain fold and successfully used a wee tool to make it easier to show we then used these correctly and this importantly as well so it's now a mountain fold and a valley fold so that 90 degree angle came in very handy and it allowed us to collapse this part nice and neatly so we're going to do the exact same on this side first of all, first of all we are going to make this mountain fold and this mountain fold so this is already a mountain fold so we can make this a mountain fold which it is and then we're going to make the 90 degree angle with this crease right here because it's attached to the mountain fold that's what we do it with so we have that 90 degree angle now we're just going to make this the mountain fold just to push it out so you should feel a little pop that and then we can make this and then we have this so we're just going to collapse it the exact same way as this side and there we go we have 90 degree creases on both sides and we have successfully used this valley fold correctly and this mountain fold correctly and the valley folds as well and as you notice that once you make these 90 degree angles it sets up the paper so if there was more paper here all this would be 90 degrees and depending on how the crease pattern is for this part to say further down you may need to keep it like that you may need to unfold the 90 degrees to collapse parts so this part, just say for example, might only need the 90 degree creases or the angles and then from here down it doesn't so you'd collapse this part and then once it's collapsed and it's nicely collapsed you would unfold this part and then start putting on all these extra creases, whatever it is, for example so that's another example of the same idea Oops. It's the same method, it's used, just it looks different, but at the end of the day it's sort of the same thing. So I'm going to just collapse this wee part as well. So like that. So this is 90 degrees on the right hand side. 90 degrees on the left hand side. If you look at it from this angle, let me try and collapse this with one hand. We both have 90 degrees from the left and the right hand side. So they both do the exact same job. I mean, to collapse it, you do the exact same thing, but of course the results are different. But the same method is applied to each one. And the good thing is that once you understand how to like recognise this pattern so you can then use this to help you with other crease patterns as well that have this in it as well because this is used in a lot of crease patterns. A lot of designers are using this. So by practising this, which is simple, and then you can then use that to your advantage in harder models. So when you look at a crease pattern and you see this part, just say this part in the bottom left of the crease pattern, you know automatically how to collapse it. 
and how to do it correctly by having the correct creases in place. So it's a good thing to have under your belt as being able to recognise patterns and sequences on how, on how to collapse. So we're going to put those aside, look at the super duper complex one by Kota. Again as you see here we have this mountain fold, we're going to see this is a mountain fold as well. Then we have the mountain fold and the mountain fold and a mountain, 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 mountain. Okay, so we know that we have to apply the same method on this part as how we collapsed this part because the colours and the creases are the exact same here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in place first, like that, which is correct. But the thing is with um, easy to super complex is basically the super complex is the easy version hidden by lots of other things. Of course as you can see here we have this overlap that hides it. Whatever creases are up here that applies into it and basically where this mountain fold stops and something else happens which is all this stuff right here which I'm not going to collapse I've only made the major creases that we need so in order to collapse this you would just fold that up and then apply the method so make your mountain folds which I have here and then I'm going to make the 90 degree crease on both sides like that and as you can see when you do that it just naturally happens I mean you can't collapse it flat like that, you can't squish it well you could that way but it's wrong so you have to bring 90 degrees that's how you get it as neat as possible as doing it that correctly and then of course that's it so it's quite hard to show, I'll probably do it in better lighting after I record this part. So here is the 90 degree angle that we have. Let me turn this light around a bit, see if it helps. So we have the 90 degree, well that's what it's like when it's flat. You would make it so it's 90 degrees, which allows you to use those creases correctly and then you would fold it up and then continue doing what you need to do for the rest so by practicing the easier ones it gives you a better understanding of how it works and of course memorizing how it works makes it easier to attempt harder ones so I hope this video was of use to you and I hope you learned something if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already so everyone thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next part